Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode we took a look at starting up our first 3D project. We created the first 3D project. Now I've gone ahead a little bit and I've, and I've added in all of the different things that I'm going to be using in order to be able to create this game overall. You guys have already seen the game, it's a 2.5D side-scrolling platformer. Uh, so yeah, I've already created all of the all of the fonts, or sorry, excuse me, all of the um, files and, and and directories that I normally use in my projects. You guys can follow along or come up with your own with your own uh, standard. It's up to you. Uh, it's really just organization, and you want to organize yourself the best way that you can. Uh, I've got in here. I've already added in as well a lot of the different models and, the, and you know all the different stuff that I'm using in order to be able to build this game. I'm going to make this stuff available to you as well. I'm going to try and uh, put up a link somewhere, and I'll, I'll include it down in the description below, uh, where you can download all of this stuff. Now, uh, I, I don't mind at all if you use it. You can use anything that I'm giving you. I have no problem with that at all. But I'd really like it if you guys took what I'm giving you, you, you know, you take the knowledge that I'm giving you, and you actually use it to make your own thing. That's what my real-life students are doing. They're following along with my tutorials using, uh, if they want to, using the assets that I provide. But ultimately, my students are going in and they are building their own game. So when I'm done, we're going to have a whole bunch of games that all my students can actually say, you know, this is the one I made, you know, and, and show it off in their demo reel. And I hope you guys do the same thing. If you do, if you make your own game, then please feel free to send a, a, a link to me or a copy to me, and I would love to see it and kind of show it off my channel saying, hey, look what everyone did. Anyway, guys, in today's episode, what I want to do is I want to start by making uh, our first platform, our first prefab, which is going to be the platform itself. This is, like I mentioned, a 2.5D side-scrolling platformer, so we're going to need some platforms themselves. And we're going to discuss just the platform itself and the, and, and the, the concepts behind it. I'm not going to decorate it with trees and everything else uh, like I did for the game. You guys can go through and do that if you want to. For now, I'm just going to discuss the important things that I'm actually doing in, in the scene itself. Uh, okay, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to discuss as well the, the uh, standard shader, the, the physically based shaders that come uh, with Unity. They're very, very powerful, and I haven't talked to them about them at all yet, so I'd really like to discuss that in today's episode as well, just briefly. All right, guys, so let's get started. Okay guys, so as I've mentioned in today's episode, I'd really like to make the platform, the main platform that we're going to use as the basis for our entire level. I'm not going to decorate it, I'm just going to show you how to set up a platform itself so that the character can stand on it. Uh, and set it up so it looks the way we want it to look. All right, if you are using the assets that I have given you, uh, then go through and try and find the 3D grass platform. Okay, you can take it afterwards and either drag it and drop it into the into the scene view up here, or take it and drag it and drop it into the hierarchy itself. I'm going to do that. I'm going to drag it and drop it in the hierarchy itself. All right, and let's let's move back and take a look. If you drop it to the hierarchy itself, it'll end up at position and rotation of zero with a scale of one. Uh, if it didn't, if you dragged it into the scene view, then it's going to show up somewhere in space. And to make sure it's at the origin, just go to the little gear over here click it and say reset. All right, when you do so, it's going to go back to the origin with a scale of one again. Okay, anyway, let's take a look at this object right now. First of all, it's really big. If we take a look down here in the game view, we can't see it at all. It's too large to see. Uh, so we're going to have to shrink down the size of it. Uh, additionally, if we take a look at the camera, this is the frustrum of our camera, what we're actually seeing on the screen here. It's rotated in the wrong direction. It's rotated uh, 90 degrees to where we want it. And the reason why it's rotated like that is because uh, any 3D package that you've used to create your actual asset, your actual mesh, will either use a right hand or a left hand rule. Um, whether it uses a right hand or left hand rule will require whether or not you have to rotate it. All right, I want the long side of my platform to be over here in front of my camera. Okay, so I'm going to first of all, I'm going to go into my actual uh, 3D platform. I'm not going to touch the top level. I'm going to use this to simply place this object in the scene. That's my goal. I'm going to use this top level to place my object in the scene. I'm going to change the name of it right away to, um, let's ch call it to um, Simple Platform. All right, Simple Platform. Uh, I'm going to change it here in this child object. And this child object is where everything is defined, where our 
our transform, a separate transform node for the child object. Um, the mesh itself is defined here, our mesh renderer, uh, and our material is all defined within this object, within this child object of simple platform. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is in the Y, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, and you can you saw there how it flipped into the direction that I wanted it to flip. If I take a look at my camera again, okay, great, it's now pointed the right way, but it's still too huge to look at. So. I'm going to go back to ground, and I know through from experience that I want this to be at 0 0.02, uh, 0 0.02, and 0 0.02. That's what my object is supposed to be. Yours might be different, all right? Whenever, whenever you, uh, whenever you spit out an object from from a 3D package, it always comes like an, an OBJ file from a 3D package. It always comes out giant, giant, giant. So uh, you're going to have to adjust the size a little bit. But you'll decide what values you want for your scale. Now that said, I can zoom in there now and take a look, and now it is perfect. It is easily within my camera frustrum, and it looks exactly like I want it to as far as its orientation within space is concerned. Um, so that looks good. Now, there's a couple things we need to do. We need to make this thing look like grass. All right, That's the first thing I want to do, is make it look like grass. We're going to do that using the provided material. Okay, the provided material right here. Whenever you export an OBJ from whatever 3D package, it exports a material as well. Uh, and it always gives it a name. In this case, it gave it ground mat as the material name, and it, it's, it put it on there as standard. Now, the standard material itself um, is a gray. Uh, anytime you create a new material or you create a new object and it's given the standard material, uh, it'll automatically be this, this kind of grayish color. Now, obviously, we don't want it to be like that. We want it to be a pretty grassy, dirty looking color. The actual color and everything about the object itself, actually about the material itself, is described right here in this material. All right, so we're going to make adjustments to this thing right now. Let's discuss this because in in Unity 5, there they created something called the standard shader, uh, and the standard shader uh, got rid of a bunch of the legacy stuff, and it's actually a very very powerful physically based rendering shader, physically based shader. All right, now um, there's two options. There's the standard shader, um, which could be called metallic, I guess, metallic shader, and there is the standard specular shader as well. Now, both of them are used to, um, to uh, as they're both physically based shaders, and they're both equally valid in, in how they're used. The standard metallic shader, and I'm, putting, I'm putting that in air quotes that you can't see, the standard shader um, bases the material surface on how metallic it is. That's, that's how it defines that, that material, on how metallic it is. Whereas the standard specular setup um, will define the uh, material's surface on how specular it is. So if we take a look, the standard material has this metallic option with smoothness, and if we take a look at the standard specular, it's got a specular option with smoothness. So they're really pretty identical. Um, how you decide to do it, going to be up to you. You have to decide what your workflow is and how you want to actually do it. I'm going to stick with the standard metallic uh, shader for now because that's the one that comes out as default anyway. So let's take a look at the options that are here. There's four, uh, four different rendering modes. We've got rendering mode, we've got mini maps, mini maps. We have main maps and we have secondary maps. All right, we're going to take a look at uh, not in detail, but we're going to take a look at, at sections of this uh, in detail anyway. The rendering mode. You have four options for rendering mode: opaque, cutout, fade, and transparent. Opaque, and each of these have their own use, obviously. Opaque is used for opaque objects, like a wall. You can't see through it. It's opaque. You can't see through it. All right? Transparent. Transparent option is used for things like glass or windows and allows a gradient in the transparency. So it has an alpha layer. It takes the alpha layer of whatever map you're putting in and it, and it, it, it adjusts the, the transparency based on that alpha. And it allows, like I said, a gradient. So you could actually have it you know, go from, from opaque to very transparent, depending on what you're doing. Okay? Uh, cutout works similarly. Cutout, however, rather than, so if we take a look at transparent down here, nothing's really changed. If we take a look at cutout, however, boom, we get this thing that says alpha cutoff. Cutout works like transparent in the fact that the alpha determines what's see-through. However, it's either on or off. There's no gradient involved in a cutout. It's either, it's either there or it's not there. The alpha cutoff slider right here allows us to choose exactly where in the alpha, like what, what amount of alpha is, is is, is transparent, completely transparent. All right, that's what the alpha cutoff does. So the difference between the transparent and the cutout is one allows gradients and one does not. Lastly, the last rendering mode is fade. Um, fade 
works much like uh, the transparent mode in that you have a gradient value for the alpha. Uh, it has a sp uh, special use, however. The fade uh, shader mode, rendering mode, is used for objects that you're going to fade in in the game itself. So if you're going to fade this object to uh, transparency in the game itself, you want to use fade. And the reason why is the transparent rendering mode, um, when you fade the actual object, will leave behind traces. It'll leave behind um, the the reflective uh, layer of the actual object, and if you want the, your object, your game object, to be faded to nothing, if you want it to be completely transparent, uh, obviously you don't want to leave behind any remnants that it was there. Um, fade using the fade option will will fade all attributes, all aspects of that individual object, so there will be no trace of it. They won't leave behind any reflection. Okay, uh, so it's kind of a special use. Anyway. Uh, in our case, we want an opaque object. This is a grass platform, and obviously we want it to be opaque. You can't see through it. It's no window or anything like that. So it's, we're going to choose opaque. Underneath that, in the main maps, we've got a whole bunch of different options in here. Albedo. Uh, albedo itself defines, uh, defines the diffuse uh, color of your object, as well as its transparency. You can put a transparency map in there. Um, uh, and that's basically what, what determines uh, the transparency as well as the color of the object. You have the option, of course, to either choose with a color picker. So if I mirror, look around through here, I can choose all the different colors I want here and make it a, a simple color. Or I can go in and I can actually choose a map of some kind. In my case, I'm going to choose this 3D platform map that I've created. And you can see now that it looks like grass and dirt. If I take a look right down here in my actual uh, game view, it now looks like a grassy surface. Below the albedo is the metallic slider. So it's not just a slider. We have, we have three options for, for choosing how metallic this object is going to look. We have a, a value between 0 and 1 that we can put in here. We have a slider that we can use. Uh, or we could actually put in a map of some kind. Now, uh, if we take a look at, at metallic, this determines how metallic an object looks. All right, This is how metallic it looks. Below that is the smoothness, and the smoothness uh, describes how how um, rough the actual surface is, with with like little micro abrasions, etc. The smoother the object is, as it moves from zero to one, one being the smoothest, the smoother it is, and the tighter the actual uh, the actual reflective surface is. You can see there's a very tight reflection here. As we move down towards zero, however, that reflection becomes much more um, diffused. All right, so that's basically how metallic works. Now, you can put in here, as I mentioned, you can either use a slider itself, and I'm going to put mine down to zero for now. I kind of want a clay look to this object. But you can put in here an actual map of some kind, an actual texture of some kind. Uh, the metallic and the smoothness are both defined by the same texture that you put in this location. The metallic will take the red channel of whatever, ob whatever texture you put in there. So if you have an RBG, uh, sorry, an RBGA um, texture that you put in there, then the red channel is what determines this slider value, this value in here, okay? Only the red channel. Uh, the other, the green and the blue are both ignored. The alpha is what de uh, determines the smoothness. So you could have an alpha in there based on whatever you want, uh, and it will determine the smoothness. So you could actually have areas of smooth and rough, depending on what the alpha itself looks like, the map you've got in the alpha. Okay, normal map, exactly the same as, as the name implies. It, it allows you to put in a normal uh, map, a normal texture in here to define the, the surface of this actual object. Same with height. Um, both normal ma uh, height and occlusion, all three of those, will allow you only to choose an, uh, a texture itself. So let me just choose a texture here. I will choose... Uh I'll choose this one here. Um, if we take a look, so in the height map, we'll determine the height of whatever the individual object is based on the color itself. Uh, I've got in here a a, uh, a uh, grayscale image, and watch them. If I turn it off here, take a look down here in this area. If I actually turn this to none, uh, it switches. So if I go from none to the grayscale, you can see how that actually switches, how it actually changes. I'm going to leave it uh, with that texture in place for now. Occlusion allows uh, for the creation of um, an ambient occlusion map, so it'll be baked right into the texture itself. Uh, below that is emission. Now, emission is kind of a fun one. Emission uh, is the luminosity of this individual uh, of this individual object here. Um, so, if you've got a value between zero and one, just like before, an object uh, value between zero and one, um, the one being highly illuminate, uh, highly illuminated, and zero being not illuminated at all, I can take a look at it right here by using this this color picker as well. So, I have an option of either black for zero and one is white. 
And watch what happens. If we slide from black to white, we can see the object itself changes uh, both here and in the actual image down here. The object itself changes from black to white. And the white is the luminosity. Uh, so it, it, it's illuminated. It'll actually cause uh, changes in the, in the global illumination of the render itself of the scene. Uh, and uh, yeah, it affects that, everything like that. Now, the interesting thing about the emission uh, option here is you can either choose a numerical value, you can choose a, a, a grayscale value between black and white, but you can also choose a map. So you can have parts of the object that are illuminated and parts that aren't. So let's say you built an object that was, an, I don't know, an undersea base or something like that, and the base itself is all this dark material except for one large window where people are looking out to see the outside creatures or whatever. That one section could be defined, that one emission section could be defined and it would have a glow about it. It would actually have a light that came on about it. Uh, so it's, it's really an interesting one. Emissions are really an interesting one. Now detail masks uh, allow you to put little tiny details since it allows it to be tiled, etc. Little tiny details within the actual image itself. So do the secondary maps. The secondary maps allow for a highly detailed um, inclusions that are put on top of the main maps. So by including a, a secondary map, um, a detailed secondary map, you can actually put a lot of detail in, let's say, threading on a, on a garment, for example, or, or I don't know, tiling on a floor, or anything like that that you really want to do. You could add that on top of everything else, uh, on top of the actual main maps themselves. So you can get some very, very detailed um, textures and shaders, a shader that you've created here. The new system, whether you've decided to go with the standard or the standard specular, very, very, very powerful. And it can be used for almost anything that you want to put in your scene. Okay, so all that said, uh, and the last thing we want to do is actually create uh, actually create the platform that allows the, the, the character to stand on it. There's an object that determines, let me shrink this down here, I'm just going to close this up for now because it's actually defined the way I liked it. Uh, there is an, a, a component that you can add that will allow um, collisions between any two or more objects, and that component is a collider. Uh, I guess that makes sense, right? Collider, collisions. Anyway, a collider. and. It's only objects that have coll colliders attached to them that can interact with each other. Okay, uh, Colliders allow interaction between two objects. Otherwise, without the collider, the objects will just simply pass through each other. Um, if I take a look, first of all, under Add Component, and I go down to Physics, and I click, well, I've got a, a bunch of different options here. I have a box collider, a sphere collider, a capsule collider, a mesh collider, a wheel collider, and a terrain collider. There's a bunch of different colliders that are available. Uh, in our case, I'm going to use a simple box collider. Bam. And I've just added it to this, this, this uh, secondary, this, this child of my uh, top game object. Uh, by adding the collider itself, you can see now in the screen that I've got this green box that's, that's surrounding my object. You want to put in um, a collider that, is, that will best define, that best define whatever object that is that you're trying to make uh, things collide into. In our case, I want to define this flat area right along here. This is where all of my, my other objects with colliders were going to be sitting. Um, I want to define this flat uh, area right here uh, to be something that you can collide with. So for example, a character could stand on it or a car could drive over it or whatever, uh, whatever I want to do with it. Um, right now it's a little bit large. It's too large. I want to lower this entire thing so that it is actually somewhere right around here. I still want it to define the sides because my character, when they're running off of a platform, for example, they might want to hit the side. So I still want to define the side. So I'm not going to make it really narrow, but I am going to shrink it down a little bit. So let's go in the Y. I'm going to go in the size and the Y, and let's make this. Uh, uh, let's make this. Well, let me let me first of all. I'm going to shrink it down in the Y. I'm going to move it in the Y like this, so it's somewhere halfway, uh, about there. And now I'm going to shrink it down in the Y. Uh, so, oops, 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 oops. Go back to my ground. Sorry, I clicked off of it. Go to my Y. I'm going to shrink it down so that the the collider itself is just sitting on top, right about there. That looks pretty good. Just sitting on top of this flat surface right there. And that way, my character can come in and he can stand on top of that. All right, and I still got the size defined. It's a little bit wide. I might shrink it a little bit in the X. No, sir, in the Z, excuse me. In the Z. Shrink it down a little bit, maybe kind of like that, just to, to, to define the edges a little better. All right, that's pretty good. That right there is all we need to do to actually create an object that we can use uh, as a platform for our characters to stand on. We've got the color in place, and we've got a collider in place in its default mode. The collider is in its default mode. That's it. Um, we can go through and add some physical materials, which we'll do a little bit later on anyway. But uh, for now, um, that's all we need to do. Now.
Now that we have this thing set up, everything is the way I like it. I'm going to go to my prefab folder right down here. I've created a, a folder I called prefabs, and this is where I'm going to store any of my objects that I want to use multiple times. Now, instead of having to recreate this 100 times, if I want 100 platforms for my characters to be able to stand on, I can create a single prefab. Watch. All I have to do is grab it and drag it and drop it somewhere in my assets folder. Somewhere in the assets folder. I've created a special folder I call prefabs. Um, where I keep all my prefabs. Now, this actual prefab can be dragged and dropped onto the scene. So let's say I drag it, let's reset it to zero so I can find it. I can drag it and I can drop it into place. I now have a prefab here that I can use over and over and over again. And all I have to do is drag it and drop it in the scene. I can make an entire level based on this. All right, prefabs are extremely powerful. Changing prefabs, so if I want to change something here so that the, let's say I actually want to go in this prefab and I want to change, let's say I want to change the color, uh, it'll automatically change all my prefabs. Or if I only want to change an individual one, well, let me do one thing at a time. Let me change my ground map just for temporary purposes to something completely different. Uh, boom, boom. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. I meant to click the little nipple thing here. Click. Uh, let's say I change it to this black and, and white one. There we go. It automatically changed both prefabs. If I want to change it back again, bam, I can change it. Well, let me do it this way here. If I only want to change one of them, I can click on this first one, go in here and say, you know what? I want this one to be green. Then I can go back here, change my little nipple thing back to green, and bam, we've got ourselves everything changed back again. All right, everyone, our prefabs are pretty amazing. We've got prefabs in place. I don't actually want this one right now. We've got our prefabs built so we can use them as much as we want. We've got our, our actual platform defined. It looks the way we want it to look. I'm pretty excited about where this is going. I hope you guys are too. If you guys enjoyed that episode, let me know because that's all we're doing for now, little steps. If you enjoyed that episode, let me know down in the comments. Say I liked it, and this is what I like, this is what I don't like. If you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Let me know what you're thinking. I want to know. Let me know down in the comments. If you give me a thumbs down, make sure you say, hey, I, you know, I didn't like the color green you picked, or whatever you want to say. Let me know why you're giving me that thumbs down, and that way I can make changes. All right, everyone? Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.